when the husband marries, who does he pick? The other one feels like an asshole. And then the other one is like, well, I guess I'll just sit here and watch you bone my so sister. So one gets... <laughs> Sorry. This is... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'll give you a pop quiz. Yeah. I don't know if we're always rolling. Or we're not rolling. Are pop we rolling? Quiz. Yeah, rolling. Always okay. rolling. Pop quiz. Who was the femme fatale in the remake with Jeff Bridges of of uh, King Kong? And it was in Jessica like, Lange. Yeah. God damn! I. You know. Damn it. The only reason I like that. Damn it! You're good. The only reason I like because I love her so much. Oh my god! And then Naomi Watts was in King Kong. And then it's always just whoever's the hottest blonde. It'll be Margot Robbie now. And Margot Robbie, yeah, she'll do a, she'll do like, um, Bong will be Barbie and Kong. No, when, it'll, when, we call Bong. When she, get, weed when she gives a monkey. A, a Maybe BJ. Garth will be in it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Garth never smoked Garth. weed. Oh, yeah, he's a, he's a, a virgin. <laughs> well, he got pubes at 38, age 38, so he was a late developer. Now, let me tell you yeah, something. Wayne, In the new, oh, go ahead. I just got pubes. What do I do with them? I have Garth glasses, and I have a Garth, yeah. What he, do I do with them? I counted them, and I named them. One's name's Lucy. One name's David Spade. Did you tie yours in knots? <laughs> I said David Spade. One's name is David Spade. <laughs> a full name? We could have had you in Wayne's World, too, just as yourself, a cameo and- you push it on your Stan pubes to the microscope and then yeah. you get to me? You play a doctor. You could be in Stan Makita's Donut Shop. You could yeah. have been a, done, been a psychopath or something. Another kind of, Canadian. Some kind of weirdo. No, <laughs> no. you look at your pubes in the magnifying glass and you get really close to one pube is me. Help! <laughs> that is like Incredible Shrinking Man. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, that's like Raquel Welch in, what was that called? When she shrunk down? 50 Foot Woman? No, 1968, Raquel Welch. Uh, the Incredible Shrinking... Hmm. Incredible Shrinking Woman. That was Lily Tomlin. Yeah, there was some other name for it, but they Wasn't all it when they went down. in the boat? They, they went inside the body yeah, yeah. inside a boat. Down, Donald Pleasance gets killed. Anyway. <sighs> all right, listen, let me do Godzilla. Half our audience. <laughs> and then we'll do Bethany. <laughs> Let's pull over and eat, honey. This is not is that the okay? best start. Okay, I'm going to start. Okay. Two, three, two. Welcome to Superfly. My <laughs> guest is Dana Carvey. <laughs> Welcome to Take One. We're back in the sh stu stu this, studio. These these, <laughs> these uh, albino shins are not going to make because I saw the last one and the whole fucking podcast is that. <laughs> That's what you're showing. I got so many letters. Yeah, I didn't know. So letters. guess what? <laughs> Look at it now while you can, because good night, Los Angeles. Irene. There you, you know when that. you're on a movie, they have dulling spray. They spray on stuff so it doesn't kick on camera. Right. We could have done and that. It accidentally spilled on me. In Those the are movie. decent cords, well, though. Well, I I don't buy anything. I don't have anything. I'm a minimalist. I didn't realize it. I don't do anything or buy anything. I know. Anything. You're Scrooge McDuck on a pile of money. I just... I'm, <laughs> well, wait a minute. Let me break down that. <laughs> wait <image>. a minute. <laughs> <laughs> He's got all the money and he goes to the guy. <laughs> I, I, I was allergic to money. Oh, that was Scrooge McDuck yeah, sneezing? Yeah, he's over a pile of money. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, you won't see that anywhere else. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, right, that's Act One. What no, else? I'm going to tell you about my weekend. The only highlight okay, was your new nickname is the weekend. <laughs> I went to the Grove to see Godzilla versus King Kong. I would do that if I could. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, you have to be kind of in the mood for that kind of movie. But I was ready for it. I went. I paid my seventy dollar, whatever it is, to go to a movie. I don't know. Popcorn. No. Because I used to say to my brother, we go to a movie mm -hmm. and then we go to the snack bar. And I said, what are you going to get? And he goes, everything. Oh, that was the Garth, that, the Garth brother. Yeah, there's popcorn and then peanut M&Ms or something like that. Yeah, pour in them. Pour in them. So you're going in. Let's just set the scene. You're at the Grove I'm Stadium. I'm fucking raw scene. dogging You paid it, $70. You're yeah. there by yourself. No, I have a friend with me. You have a guy with you. Just yeah, in and case he, there's no, no females want to see fucking <laughs> King Kong. <laughs> so, okay. So now. So I go in. What happens next? I sit through the 44 minutes of commercials. I know. You see it like, you know, there's Nicole Kidman. She gets applause now for that dumb AMC thing. And then, uh, and then they show commercials, then previews, and then another commercial. When I saw Top Gun, you're almost about to see it. And then Tom Cruise comes on. He goes, 
Welcome to the movie and thanks for coming. I mean, we're already here. Go. We don't need you. I know. I thought that was a bold move because like in a minute, he's going to be uh, Captain McGuire or something. Yeah. But, Hi, I'm Tom Cruise. In 30 seconds, you'll yeah. see me pretending I'll look exactly like this, but suspend disbelief. Enjoy the movie. Yeah. Why one more commercial? We're, you got us. We're in. I go to a movie at 12, at 12, 15 start. Mm-hmm. The movie starts at four o'clock. Yeah, that's true. Let's just put it, say it. What I stayed at Cheesecake Factory a little longer because I knew that. <laughs> Cheesecake. So I go in. That's Godzilla versus references. Kong. I, I, <laughs> okay. naively thought, innocently, that Godzilla and Kong could be friends. Not a chance. So that was your first mistake. Yeah, I walk <laughs> in. I go. Maybe they're buddies. No, it's not a two hander. They. Did you see any of the trailers where they're chasing each other with fangs? <laughs> I know. I think it's just. <laughs> When you're a monster, you're you just like the challenge of other monsters. Mm-hmm. Just I thought the Wicked over. Witch would be really friends with the Midget and the Wizard of Oz. I thought they'd I would dance too. together. I would, I would yeah. do at that age. But we represent the lollipop. You need a bad Donald guy. Duck. This movie right. is two bad guys. Kong versus Kong right. doesn't okay. make sense. So anyway, they come out. Godzilla, <laughs> who has like a American eagle head, he's not that attractive because it doesn't match his monster body. No wonder he's single. He's, he's got he's, a tiny skull. Tiny skull. With huge shoulders. Godzilla. His, the new Godzilla mm-hmm. has a little head, big shoulders. Oh, he's kind of fat. He's, yeah, he's, he's kind he's, of. He's Trump. He's, he's got Trump's kind mm-hmm. of pear shaped body. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm Godzilla. You're, you're, you've got a terrific I carry weight down here. I'm kind of thin up here. The shoulders are kind of tiny. The <laughs> bottom is huge and the legs are huge. No, he, but I, I he, heard Trump is really pear shaped. I knew a guy went golfing with him once. No, I think he is. I think that's it's pretty obvious. Yeah. He's got quite a rump on me. <laughs> and he says, he says, King Kong, everyone's saying bad things about him. He's a pear. <laughs> he's got he's got a fat ass. Get out of here, Joe. So here comes Kong and Godzilla and they fight immediately. Um, all Question. my hopes are dashed. Go ahead. Did not, uh, did Dolly Parton write the soundtrack? Because it'd be like, here you come again. <laughs> Looking, like, Looking a like a fat lizard five stories tall. <laughs> that so I, like, I had a fight with. <laughs> yeah, so Kong. Oh, he, best non sequitur of Superfly. Take one. Dolly. Dolly. So, so he's, you sometimes block, I'm not gonna let you block my the camera story, when you ask way. questions. Yep. So I... Um, that's pretty much it. Um, oh, you wrote a review. Yeah, so the review is uh, Dolly well, Parton. Well, did you enjoy in. it? I'm curious just as a fan. Well, he gets, Godzilla gets jacked up by nuclear energy. So he has to run around all the nuclear pants and huff. He, that's and how he gets. And it comes super Godzilla. Yeah, and he gets crazy. And I'm like, fucking, no one's whispering this to Kong because he's going to lose quickly, I can tell, because he's just a monkey. Who cares? <laughs> and then there's a deaf girl in the movie that tries to help. She's from an Iwi tribe. And she she can talk to Kong. So like when Kong gets stabbed, he falls on the ground and the deaf girl's like this. But she's not dumb and blind because I'm a big fan of No, the she who. can talk. She's just dumb. Okay. She's not deaf and dumb and blind. That guy sure not can like, play uh, a mean pin. Not like Tommy. Okay. So she goes, does sign language to Kong and then he goes like this. And then she goes, <laughs> Kong's hurt. I go, well, no shit, Sherlock. We, he just got stabbed. I mean, we don't need the Long Island medium in for this one. We, we figured that part Long out. <laughs> I, I, remind me after you finish your review, I'll do my Long Island medium. Please. Yeah. I, I, when I go in to get my haircut, I go, give me the Long Island medium. <laughs> okay. I like it today because it looks unkept. It's like bed head. It is. It's, it's good it's though. Accidentally looks good. It doesn't look squ- We're going to get comments and fucking- I don't care. I love the comments. So I love the rage. The radiation is is good, but when he lifts his leg, you can tell his balls are smaller. It doesn't it doesn't. Is that a joke, or you really see his testicles? It's a PG. I look okay. Because in most of the reviews I read, they said uh, disappointingly, no Kong testicles were available. <laughs> no in Godzilla. The screen I saw. Oh, Godzilla. Because he it well, drinks course, radiation. Got so much fat, and so much stuff. The testicles are fine. They almost but disappeared. But the bottom and the thighs are so big; it's an optical illusion. <laughs> if it's, it's like, well, that's the end. I'm so just, at the end, Godzilla is a is a good guy, and then the whole town likes him. He's like throwing out a pitch. But at but the don't Yankees. tell me who wins. Well, it's more we're like we're I won't out. even I won't even mention Mothra because. Mothra there's, there's makes a an few, appearance. I'm not even gonna. I, there are too many spoilers. Fuck. But I would say it's if you if you want to be confused, and you have three and a half hours, go. Okay, so pe- people, have you found any subscriptions you forgot about? I just said this two minutes ago. There was a streamer that hit me up. Hey, thanks for your moolah for last month. We just charge you. 
It didn't say, do you want to be charged again? There's a lot of these on your phone that just like wail on you and, and you don't even know it. You need someone to get in there and shake the tree a little bit. Rocket Money, it, it alerts you of an increase in subscription price. It, it could negotiate it for you if you want. It can cancel yeah. it for you. It's so time consuming. Nearly 75% of people have subscriptions they've forgotten about. So, mm-hmm. yeah, this is know, a real I, problem. This product needed to be made in rock, Rocket yeah, Money. Did I thought because, I had about 10. I have about 6,000. Oh, I one last night. We wanted to watch something and it said uh, free trial. Oh, free. Mm-hmm, but then you have to sign. Mm-hmm. It took 20 minutes to sign up. They got all the information and the movie sucked. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and it's such a headache to get on. But mm-hmm. then they got you and they don't even let you know. You're and then just over. every month they just do your bam, bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. When you got financial, you know, everyone's pretty tight in the financial crunch. And you, 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 you don't mm-hmm. want money going down the drain that you don't even care about at all. It's hard enough with the stuff you definitely need. You don't need a lot of this stuff. They come Mm -hmm. in. It's a personal finance app, finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, helps lower your bill, hence grows your savings. Right. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to spend time combing over all these charges. You know, that doesn't sound like so much fun. They have over 5 million users, Dana. That's a lot. Wow, it's and growing. They've saved yeah. people a total of five hundred million. That's crazy in canceled subscriptions. So wow, they, they save members up to seven hundred forty dollars a year. Damn, when using all their apps features. It all wow, compounds. We. It all adds up. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to RocketMoney.com/slash/Superfly. That's rocketmoney.com slash superfly. Rocketmoney.com slash superfly. Sarah, it's Spade and Dana, and we're and, oh, and no one cares about your 50th anniversary dumb interview. I was so excited when I got the call for us. Call us and you'll be on camera. And it'll be seen by at least 3,200 people. Right. We get a lot of YouTube comments, which mean nothing. Yeah. So uh, we're uh, officially one. Us. One one thousandth of Joe Rogan's audience. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot of people that watch our show that also watch Joe Rogan, if that means anything. And, so, and his brother, Biff Rogan. Get that mullet. Who works at a target. Get that mullet. <laughs> this is going nowhere. This is going to be, this, this make, voicemail is going to be cut after. Don't make through. me sneeze again as Donald Duck. No, that was I'll, so I will good. do it if we need it. That was so good. I hadn't done that in a while. I actually was sneezing. Shit. Mm. Okay. What's going on? Oh, Long Island Medium. Yeah. She's like, um, how was it? What was it? Teresa. Oh, they, 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 she never says the, the, the loved ones or is are they in heaven? What is it? You know, what's he saying to you? He said he, he liked his socks. He liked he the did. yellow socks. He did. He's in the afterlife and he's communicating with us. Yeah. He said he liked the yellow socks that he had in the drawer. But he didn't say anything about meeting God. No, he just really liked those socks. <laughs> That's what he's wasting his time it, with in go, heaven. It goes from there. More I like it. little things, you know. Yeah, and then they, they're like, "Why is he talking about that? Why he is should... he talking about that? He likes he, he he likes it when you gave. He liked the warm blanket you had. Oh, he didn't have a special warm blanket. Well, couldn't you have got him a blanket? <laughs> he died of pneumonia. Couldn't you have gotten a blanket? And maybe, so then she turns on. Yeah, she just she doesn't even make sense. And then she flips it on him. I don't know. These are tight as fucking shit, aren't they? <laughs> oh, fuck. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. So how are you? Nice to, nice to meet you, Bethany. Nice to meet you, too. This is so exciting. That's Dana. Yeah, we have we have a little counter. There's 36 people watching us right now. No, there's not. That's a lot. It's the most <laughs> you've ever had. No, this is just we 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 tape it because we have a video one now, so we can see you, which is way better. Right, and it would be make you insecure if it was only six, 36 people because you are a comedian. Yeah, that's mm. a big crowd for me though. Are you hydrating with a sort of a energy drink? I'm hydro. I have like severe. I'm a thirsty bitch. Like I'm a very dehydrated person by nature. So I always have like multiple beverages. Do you around. mind if I, I use really... that for a song title, "Thirsty <laughs> Bitch"? I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> I do not. 
I do not mind. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm a thirsty dude. <laughs> Listen, the fun's over. We have to find out about the crime. So the crime, the okay. crime at hand, Dana. There's a story going on. Oh, I, I, I always fill it. Dana in, but mm -hmm. uh, there's not one guy. Probably random guys running around. I think they're guys, New York, and punching girls in the face. Is that close so far, Bethany? Yes. It was funny because when I was thinking about that, we were going to talk today, I was thinking about the fact that you guys aren't originally from New York, but lived in New York when you were doing SNL and what that perspective was like, what your version of vision of crime was then I was thinking of pre Giuliani and the seventies. And then I was thinking of how I think of it now, how like some guy wrote an article during the pandemic about crime, Seinfeld pushed back on it. It's been a discussion and there's been like a defensiveness about it yeah. because New Yorkers want to gaslight and pretend it's not actually happening and close their eyes and pretend they're not seeing it. So that's why I think that's an interesting discussion. We, when we had crime, it was crime, but it was like big crime. Like there's a bank robber and then they'd catch him. They'd go to jail. There's no real crime and punishment anymore. It, it seems it's watered down a little bit. Yeah. So there's crime and there's not as much punishment. And that makes more crime in my, in my, rough math in my head. So when things happen like this, they sort of go unnoticed and swept under the rug. Well, uh, uh, to insert this for a second, once you, you, you get used to it, like in the eighties, it was pretty rough. I was, I lived there in 81 as well, but then I came back and like, after Giuliani, I don't know what he did, but my wife and I are walking around New York and we're not looking over our shoulder. And he said, yep. well, what happened? And then Times Square became like Disneyland. So then the juxtaposition was like, this was possible? <laughs> like, right. what happened? Right. So. Right, right. Well, the Giuliani was the not fucking around crew. And so that's very interesting, especially when you're dealing with a jungle like New York. And it was left kind of unguarded during the pandemic and the inmates are running the asylum. And so from a superficial <laughs> standpoint, if you go into CVS, mascara and eyelashes are locked up. Like shampoo, like it's so so bad for business to begin with because you can't go in there and just pick something up and go pay for it. You have right. to like call four people and a supervisor to get a mascara. I mean, so that's because anybody could steal anything they want. And, and, and a problem, Bethany, just so I can interrupt you for sure, um, uh, at least once, at is that when these stores, we see that happening, they're sort of counting on a, a good natured, normal person with morals saying, oh, I'll pay. These people just carry stuff out. At some point, someone's going to go, why am I paying? Like, it, it, it's, it's just as easy to walk straight out. Like, I feel like hardworking people are getting the shaft. By the way, it's 100%. It goes through your mind. Like, well, it's harder to pay than to not pay. Right, right. And it's people- It's harder to pay, yeah. And well, what yeah. was your blink? I mean, you, you were considering getting a place there, but you changed your mind. I mean, was it worse than you thought? I mean, you obviously got slapped or hit in the face. We'll get to that in a second, but does it feel worse than ever? <laughs> well, I ultimately, it feels really bad. And David said it well in the sense that not everything is like the most gigantic thing. I mean, the numbers don't lie, but like I wouldn't have my daughter who's turning 14 on the subway by herself, which some of her friends do. That's sort of been something she mentioned fluently. And I was like, absolutely not. What a daredevil. Her walking around. What? No. Sorry. That's like a daredevil no, no. move to go on the subway alone and now. To, to, I think what you're going to say is there's two lanes of this. There's the actual crime. And then there's the threat of the crime. So, you, you know, I, I was in a CVS in West Hollywood. All of a sudden they're screaming on the other side of the store. So your day is, you know, you're tense, you're worried. So mm -hmm. it, the psychology of New York, I had a friend move and he just said, everyone is angry. Every, so, and he yes. loved New York. So I have one daughter and it's unfortunate that like I'm putting the fear of death in her. And I don't even think she wants to listen anymore because every time I see something that actually has happened in New York, like the punching of the face or the other thing, and like you said, we'll get into it. I'm constantly like almost badgering her because I'm so helpless that when she's with her dad, she's in New York and hmm. she's sometimes like, oh, we just were here. Or I have something on my phone that says where she was. I'm like, wait, what, what do you mean? How'd you get there? How'd you get home? Like I am now a, a helicopter parent about this thing because you're right. When I'm in a drugstore, my shoulders are up like any human that's near me. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're going to do something to me. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Yep. In the city. Yeah. And so you got, and you were one of the ones, I think before this 
turn into, let's call it a TikTok trend, unfortunately. But that's what, it, when it's on TikTok, that's what they call things. But so you got hit. Females, for some okay. reason, are getting hit. Just tell us that. Yeah, tell us the story. story real quick. So, yeah, yeah, I ultimately did get a place later than this, which is another conversation, because, but in a different area, because I wanted to be safe and I had reasons because of work, because I didn't want to be like constantly in a hotel room with a garment bag, like a hooker that I am. But <laughs> so separately, I was on this. <laughs> and a thirsty bitch. I am a hooker anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a thirsty bitch. So I was in New York City. Um, I think it was like 72nd and West End. Um, which sounds like kind of fancy to me, like yeah. West End. I don't know. It, like it was a new area that I was going to look at and the building was pre-war super fancy. And I I was ironically excited because I, I like doings around where I'm going to look like, oh, is there a shoe, may, a shoe repair or a nail place? And so there was this little deli and then a little bakery kind of right next to each other. And I walked in and, and it was this tiny place that had all these different kinds of desserts that I was interested in. And I took my phone out because to take a picture of them. And I turned around and a guy just, as I was walking out the door, just whacked me in the face. And I have a driver who is, you know, he's an Albanian tough guy. He's a security guy, but he wasn't in the store with me. He was outside yeah. by the car. And when I walked out, I made eye contact with him. Like some, you know, something went down with this guy and he came over and they had words and the guy was homeless and he seemed, um, unwell. I mean, he just seemed un unhinged and unwell. And mm. I was, I said, it just mm. wasn't a situation where I felt like calling the police. Cause it felt like this guy was troubled right. enough on his own. I mean, I, I you know, he's going to be there for a night and more anxiety he, and they're going to let him out. I, I just mm. thought, and then he might have I a think, vendetta against you because you threw yeah. him in. You, you just pay a big price when you go through life on guard intense, even if you're not directly affected. And when you go to other places outside of the city, like in the country somewhere, and then you go, well, this is the way it's supposed to be. I'm not supposed to be worried at a pharmacy yeah. or just walking down the front of my house. So it's, exactly. uh, it's sad to hear this, and I hope that they fix it. And it's, it and it's it's interesting because this is sort of, it might sound mean, but when they say, oh, someone was mentally ill uh, or they attack someone and then they have a problem with the police, and but they say, oh, but he's, they always claim, oh, but he's mentally ill, so let him go. It's like, well, listen, that doesn't mean you're not going to hit someone with a brick. That's the people you want sort of pulled in no, somewhere to get looked someone at. Someone has a mental illness not, that, that, you know, encourages violence inside their right. brain. That's a whole other, a right. whole other topic. Every but, serial killer is mentally ill. Obviously, yeah. they're not supposed to kill people. So that's not the best excuse to say we should leave them alone and let them roam around. It's, it's like- not. It's not, but there's a version of compassion and yeah. there's a version of intellectual understanding that the pandemic drove a lot of us who were sitting home and who are not broke crazy. Mm -hmm. And so you're thinking about the desperate, it's the, the thing is there's a feeling of desperation mm -hmm. and you can like, it's palpable when you're near somebody on the street, like there's a good chance if you see somebody kind of close to you, they're going to start screaming or go off. And mm -hmm. there's the mental illness thing. And you're seeing it in other cities too. I saw it when I was in LA, San Francisco is a, you know, yeah. a wild town now. So it's this it's it is this post pandemic thing. And then instead of like being the not fucking around crew, like the Giuliani situation, it's sort of just like letting if you if you let all your kids in the classroom, just do whatever they want. It's not going to be a great situation. That's mm -hmm. what's going on. Yeah, that's exactly. So I'm so was that the first time you met John Lovitz when you got slapped? <laughs> was when he punched you. <laughs> that's so funny. No, I did meet John Lovitz years ago <laughs> with Shannon, my friend Shannon, and he was early. He was an early adapter to smacking He's a, people. A good friend of ours, and we always use him as a Are you jealous guy. of my right hook? I heard what you said to Bethany. <laughs> Are you saying I'm homeless? No. I punched her? I agree. We try to make light of this, but it is it is such a no, complicated it's, it's a traumatizing situation. Thing. You're just sucker punch or something. And you remember it forever. Yeah. It, that that, it's, that it's, really scares that, you. And, you know, you paint a good, well, I, I kind of feel like, I feel what New York is like right now. And I don't, I don't want it to be that way. I, I'm so fond of New York and love New York. I don't want it to be yeah. angry and but stressed. What, but we're talking about specifics. And the thing is, it is a whole macro situation because if I go there and then I text the realtor, screw this, I don't want to live here. This place is nuts because I identify the entire place with that experience. Yeah. Plus I go to a normal drugstore and things are in cages. Then it's going to affect the real estate market and the economy. And then it's really going to be a circular reference of, of New York doom. I think that's what's happening, yeah. Mm.
And oh. Jerry Seinfeld, I hate to say, because I love him and I know you guys love him, but he was wrong when he responded to that guy's open letter. The guy I think was named Steven and he wrote an open letter about New York in the beginning of the pandemic. And Jerry got really annoyed and he wrote an open letter and it's kind of not been great. I think it's gotten exponentially worse even since then. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Me too. I think I, so. yeah, I, I agree. He loves New York and, and I, I do too. We stayed there for our whole run of SNL. Oh yeah. Um, all right, we'll Great let you go, you. but uh, that's very anyway, nice of you to jump thanks, on with us, Thanks, Bethany. Bethany. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. I like funny, you got funny guys having good, important conversations. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Uh, I'd love to have more of them. Weird combo, you know? but it's so We're, far, I'm so sick good. of the funny part. I'm kind of burnt out. <laughs> what am I, I going to do? You might not, not be funny anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious now. Hey, Dana, are you going to New York? Not going to do it. All right, bye. Thank you. Bye, David. Can we call her collect next time? Um. Bill her for that call. She's such a. Uh, I, I love, I love talking her. And she's such a wealth of knowledge. She spits it all out. Well, Great it's just words. fun when you're not trying to be politically incorrect, and we're still in the mode of like, yeah. you know. We have another subject about one was the TikTok. There's an article in in your mm -hmm. New York Times. It says TikTok. People quit filming yourself getting punched and talking about it because it starts to trend. So they, it's another thing where they blame the people instead of the crime. Uh, show a picture of one of the people that got hit. One of the girls got hit if we have one because they actually get get nailed. Look at this. Well, that's a little baby one. See in that left corner. But it is a goose egg uh, if you can see it. And then there was a blonde. Uh, look at that. That's a full egg on her forehead. This is like, my, hey, Brian, shut up, Brian. It's a whole trend. We got to go to punch a woman because I saw it on TikTok. I don't know if it's cooler to punch or get punched. Um, we'll look at TikTok. We, we'll figure it well, out. Well, one's the aggressor, one's the victim, I think. You know? No. Yeah, I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah. it is just kind of funny. A guy who's never hit a woman in his life is on TikTok. I'm I know. They, I'm they start punching. They start jizzing over It's that. really just, well, I don't I, know. Did you ever see Clockwork Orange? That's a weird one. It's but about yeah. society just collapsing under this in the criminals take over. That's, what's, it's, that's sort of what's going on quietly. It's Escape from New York, and you're... Kurt Russell? S Snake Pilsen. I was going for the actual Snake name. Snake Fliskin. Yeah, Fliskin. You're Snake Fliskin. Fuck yeah. You're our only hope of a troubled Oh troubled my God, nation. I hope it doesn't come to that. They're slapping people, they're punching people, and my watch, you're gonna... You're no, not but look at this it. one. This, this, is a, this is a good story. So a guy was at Subway. Do you have that one, Greg? Guy's at Subway waiting in line, and the guy in front of him, of course, starts hassling the employee spits on her punches her twice oh. and the guy behind is a wrestler and he just takes him down right away i love it no one gets involved anymore i know he let her punch twice <laughs> he says one i'll give you the trend two you're going down so he tackled him and he goes i didn't want to beat him up too bad i love this dude and he goes but i held him and said you're not going anywhere until the cops come you can stop fighting i'm a pro wrestler and the guy's like oh love it I love those stories. Death Wish, Charles Bronson. Come on. Well, th th because we were fight back. We were bullied. We're, oh, of course. Right. I mean, if I was, you know, Gabriel, so we Zulo, stud. That's who did it. Stud. Let's make this entire episode about this. No, we're moving on. Random violence. No, we got. No, we're <laughs> going to lighter back. fare. <laughs> What's the next one? Golden Bachelor. What do we got? Just <laughs> lighten up the people. Who oh are... no, this is fun. This is fun. Uh oh. This is good news. The conjoined twins, Abby. And whoever <laughs> we went from violence, they to got married. Well, we're back to lighter fare. This is a, a feel good story. I love them. I actually like the taller mm -hmm. one. Um, when they took math, they really put their heads together. <laughs> I know there's too Sorry, many, there are too many, I have too many good Sorry. jokes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think I had a joke, but I, they said they have okay. three vaginas. That doesn't make any sense. Does it? <laughs> three. three. You think they'd have one or one. two. Well, once nature gets a little distorted, it'll start just yeah, you know, it's, playing with the recipe. It's churning out. Oh well, yeah, waist Extra. down they share everything. Only one set of everything waist down. So if they have diarrhea, <laughs> yeah. that's that's just, first question. I don't want to think it's about just one it. set of the poops only. Uh, so I hear that it's so <laughs> bonding that sometimes even though they can get separated, they decide to stay together. That's what I heard. I don't. Know oh, you mean if they it. could? Well, they're so connected, like. No, well, that's no, that's people a pun right now. that are joined at the head. At the head, but the and they have two bodies. Yeah, that I could okay. imagine. 
they're used to it. Okay. Uh, but well, these two are joined the body, and they so they couldn't do anything to them. Okay. But when the husband marries, who does he pick? The other one feels like an asshole. He's like, well, it's like The Bachelor. <laughs> who gets the final rose? Gives it because they're twins. Gives it to one, the tall one, probably. And then the other one is like, well, I guess I'll just sit here and watch you bone my so sister. So one gets. <laughs> sorry, is it? <laughs> Yeah, uh, just cancel me now. So one has got a husband, and they're making out and having sex. Yeah. And the other one is just there for the party. Yeah, and he's like, you can bring your ugly sister. And he's like, She's like, well, we're twins. That's a little rude. Um, <laughs> you know, for some guys, that's a turn on. Some guys, it's a non-starter. For Trump, it happened to him. I'm it happened to alive. Trump again? They were two together. One, I love beautiful, but the heads were together. I wasn't going to go there. So <laughs> just making... I think that's enough on those guys. <laughs> We what's, have, we got good stuff. What's here. our, where's our feel good? <laughs> That's a feel good. This is the darkest. Oh yeah, we're supposed to do fun stories we've ever done. Oh here, no, oh, here's Golden about Bachelor. Broken, broken love, love. Yeah. You know, no, the Bachelor. Okay, read it because people are driving. Golden Bachelor and his wife yeah. still living separately three months after their mm -hmm. dream TV wedding. Right. Don't. I hope this doesn't hint that reality shows are a scam. I do not want to hear this bullshit. Yeah, it's just like the Easter Bunny's not real or Santa Claus didn't come down the right. chimney. I mean, this is right up there with me. I'm I'm fully traumatized. But they're, what I thought was maybe they're doing a couple's thing, like separate bedrooms. Oh yeah, yeah we fine. like each other better. Now, why don't you take the house down the street? Now mm. we'll really have a good relationship. I think that's happening way more than you know. Yeah. But they're states away. That's really love. But their phone sex bill is massive. <laughs> he goes, I'm too tired to even have phone sex. No, she's like, come on. She calls him by his age. Come on, 73. What are you going to do, 73? Come on, do it. You like, like he's it? a basketball player. You like it like player. that, 73? Huh? Huh? And she's, he's like, yes, yeah, 68. Hmm? Here, here's your Viagra smoothie from Erewhon. Why, why, is, why, is, why is sex talk always angry? What are you going to do? You huh? like that shit? Huh? You like it? <laughs> Why is it so mad? When you say it to girls, they go, is that a rhetorical question? You like that shit? <laughs> so I do or I don't? I don't know. Huh? You well, look, I think they're adorable. And um, I think through a surrogate, they should make a human being and raise it and call the human being David Spain. That's good. <laughs> I'm in two different bits now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm as in long the... as I get a laugh in the room, I'm. In, yeah. you can use my name too, but you're, you're famous. You're it's like, a funny name. David Spade is funny. It's funnier to use me. Mm -hmm. But, oh, here's, well, last thing I was going to say, who was hornier out of those two on the Golden Bachelor? I think the, I think the female was. Okay, back, now this is Squatter Burger, Danny. This You'll is like me it. trying to read. This is a squat, you know, the squatter situation. The squatters, which I thought was kind of a joke, but it's a real. Yeah, real, you, real you, you stay in someone's house for more than yeah. 15 minutes, you own it. I think Damn that's it, my rule. shins are coming out to play. <sighs> stay down Get there. those glare sticks stay down away there, from me. fucking shins. Well, I told you, Theo Vaughn, I came in with short black sleeves. You come on in here with all those wide arms. <laughs> <laughs> with all your wide arms. With all those wide arms. And he was right. I looked at the monitor. I, I looked like, like, he's a like a fucking squid. Freak, like squiddy white, <laughs> super white and black t-shirts. So then I bought this and all I wear. No, those are cool. Is it? It's Is that James Purse? No, The Gap, $13. <laughs> Don't act like it's a lot of money. you are. We're going to talk about your budget. Later. I just take a money gun into James Purse. <laughs> Nothing today. <laughs> that's a new, uh, money gun. You've seen money guns? No, that, well, I like the new effect. Rappers have it. They <laughs> stack hundreds in it, walk in a strip club and go. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then it just flies. Okay. So this okay, is. Okay. What are you seeing? So Evan? the funny part, not that everyone's squatting. And, Should uh, I st face David more? Okay. I think when you <laughs> use your hand, it blocks that camera. And mine probably blocks yours. Oh, is I'm blocking his. Is that, is that what that I'm it? doing? Is that what you're doing? Uh, no, this camera's just overheating a little bit. This one oh, had, overheating. This... Okay, because I'm overheating. <laughs> I, I'm glad the camera's overheating, Because your hotness? Too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. You know what they named today? They, I, I was looking down SNL stuff. The best single cast. So they said, oh. you know, like for me, they said 80, 87, 88. But for 91, 92, they call it the best year of a single cast in the history of SNL. Oh, for real? Was and, I on that? Yes, and they said... Dana Florfo, myself, and had left, and Chris Rock, 
and they didn't mention Mike Myers. It was you, Farley, Sandler. It was a great cast, mm. but I was there in 91 and 92. It should have been the day, it should have been the overlap with you, Mike, and then all of us. Well, I, that's what I thought. I thought that was the best, most potent yeah, yeah, year, yeah. that 92, three. But this, your guys was great too. It was like when you took over, it was more like 94, five or three later, three, it three was four, five. more of a th yeah. two, three, four was really yeah. big. Um, so. I thought you guys were the funniest, honestly. When I came back to guest host, and I was in a room with you, Farley, and Sandler, I said, these guys are the funniest than oh, we were. Nice. <laughs> we were good sketch players, but it's different. That's nice you to it's say. It's hard to see yourself the way everybody knows. You guys had, those were the years. I know. You it's guys like the little the... engine that could, but there was a couple years there that you guys were kicking ass on that It show. does also I take so. time to look back and appreciate. So the new cast now, I think later, will look back and say, oh my God, those guys are so great. But at the time, it's never... Like your time right then. They never. Well, I don't they want didn't, it to end. I they really... didn't fawn over you. They didn't fawn over us. They waited till later. And then when we were there, they said, you guys are great. And then we left. Well, you always, whoever does it before you. I saw Martin Short in 78 on SCTV. And I was like, uh, yeah. and Steve Martin live yeah. at the boarding house. And I was like, they're doing what I want to do. And mm -hmm. I was nowhere. So, of course, you, you, and then you see him later on. And you're on. still a little bit in awe of them. Not to over talk her, but it's just so random that Bethany was an intern for SNL and she had a catering company on the side, catered a Joe Dirt premiere party oh. and her business took off after that. Fun fact. But it's just funny the overlap Joe you guys have had your whole life. It's kind of weird. Okay, quickly, the last okay. story about squatting is the, the, the funny part. They call it Squatter Burger because the people, you know, mm -hmm. these people get in your home and then right. they don't. And there shouldn't even be any squatters rights laws yeah. at all. Why is it someone steals no, your house? They no. can have it. It's yeah, so, no, it's called stealing. <laughs> yeah, it's stealing. So these people said, no, we live there. And they go, we, we need proof that you live there. So they sent a Shake Shack receipt where they got an Uber Eats delivery and it had their address on it. That was one of their pieces of evidence. And it's like, what? It could be, <laughs> you could stand in front of their house and order. It's, just, you know, <laughs> what? it's so stupid. So the judge is like, okay, it all makes sense now. So I don't know. So anyway, that was, that was Squatter Burger. Funny title though. I looked it up because I, I saw it on the uh, mm -hmm. preview of the episode and I, I couldn't find it. Oh. But yeah, Squatter Burger is a funny title. Well, that brings me to this one because that falls into uh, There's No Way That's mm -hmm. Real. So this one I saw and I go, there's no way. Okay. It says Michigan's giving illegal migrants 6000 each if you move there. You have, you have to have one condition. You have to be an illegal immigrant. <laughs> The office <laughs> wow, that's stated funny. that they're renting, they give you 6000 towards rental of apartments so you'll move there. I don't, this might be a fake story. A side story, because I was looking this up, is that they're giving people who have a home and an extra bedroom, they'll give them 500 a month to house a illegal immigrant. Oh, in the extra yeah. bedroom? Yes. In London, mm -hmm. if you're old and they deem that your house is too big for you, <laughs> they'll yeah. They'll make you sell it to them so they can house more people in. Yeah, I get I it. I love the people tell me this house is too big for me. I don't want them to steal that and start shoving people in here. Well, what's the next I step? Want it's my too friends fancy for you. They paint it really dull. It's just too fancy. No, you shouldn't wear cords. I, They're I too want, young for you. We're going to take them away. Keep that shin down. <laughs> I want more government telling me what to do. I just <laughs> like it. No, I like to be told. I like to be what to you know, wear. I'm looking at the California squatters' rights. What do they say? They actually have to pay taxes. Oh, squad. The they have, have to, to, in order to take over permanently, you oh. have to live there openly for five years, mm -hmm. but you're required to pay taxes while you're there as a squatter. I'm surprised. But they can't huh. kick you out right away. They can. Um, you just have to go through a whole procedure of filing right. like a, an eviction years. notice, and it says that you can, but. It, yeah. And that they don't necessarily have rights, but there's things to protect them if they do. Well, Follow, they have to follow yeah, certain rules to be protected. why does a squatter, why, it's like saying bank robber rights. If you're breaking the law, why do you have so many rights over a person that owns a house? Wouldn't that grind your onion if you bought a place? Like, I just got that little fucking shit shack down south. If someone was there, oh, I'd be shit, like, how shit. do I get someone out? And they go, no, I own it now. I've stayed here for four days. Like, get fucked. I turn the water on in my name. I'm like, I don't know how to do that. And they do it, and now they own it. And right. I got to go through, hire a lawyer. And, yeah, it's the Come downstream on, consequences. There, There is no solution. There's only trade-offs. I would try to get into this country, apparently, from where everyone else is trying to get in. Yeah, I mean, it's... But when you came to Ellis Island, because I was there doing a benefit... Do you have a place there? No. Oh, yeah, but you did a benefit there? Did you for real? <laughs> yeah. And it's pretty profound. You walk around Ellis Island, and you see what the immigrants coming off and what the rules were. One of them was 
you will not become a ward of the state. Like you, and if you if you couldn't answer no to that, they put you back. What on does the that boat. mean, a ward of the state? Uh, government dole, government money. Oh, you support. couldn't be yeah. a burden. Yeah, couldn't okay. be a burden. Maybe that's the way they said. I it. I think they crossed that part out. It was 1906. Now I'm telling you, What's a you can come story? in this here country, but you better not be a burden to society. Because that's where we draw the line. We welcome all immigrants and let's say become burden to society. Hello, I'm David Spade. <laughs> oh, I thought that was Little Meech. Uh, <laughs> Little Meech is a rapper, apparently. Okay. And, uh, he's, got a, a, he's got a broken finger. Uh, I didn't know that. Um, that's so- Dr. Evil's uh, son. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it strikes again. <laughs> Little Meech, oh, I thought it was funny. He said between Nickelodeon, uh, Diddy, and that bridge, I don't trust shit these days. Yeah, it's funny. Remember? I don't. That, is that the slang? It's the, I, I don't. don't. Yeah. I like I that. just sort of figured it out, yeah. Between Nickelodeon, Diddy, and that bridge, I don't trust shit. Shit. Now, what is your thoughts on the bridge, quickly? Was it an... I, I still think it's fishy, even though it's water. Well, what's the rumor of Diddy and the bridge? I don't keep up. No, Diddy... As I know we got arrested. Did he got some, he's saying yeah. between these three things that happened oh, lately, oh. there's some sketchy shit. Oh, and on. the bridge was the the bridge. Okay. The bridge was the one where the boat went like <laughs> I this. I thought it was Oh Diddy. my God, we have, look at this. Here's the big thing. Oh my God, we have no control. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> That's what I thought was fishy. I'm like, you don't do a no, button it, hook. What are you running it pattern? It looked like it just drifted in. It didn't did take it a though? right angle. I didn't see a turn. No, I did. I'm just starting trouble. Oh, look, come Look's on. I cl- took the train across the bridge. The friend's offense. I took the train many times with a choo choo train across the bridge. Uh, there was never a tra- train on the bridge. Holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading the wrong spot the f- <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. <laughs> Biden not working. I just thought that was funny. <laughs> Heather looks sad. <laughs> We're going too long, aren't we? What is this? Oh, this is a fun one. I had nothing on this other than robots giving hand jobs. No, a, a, a hand job from a robot is the worst because they, they're masseuses now. That's I forgot to say that part. Oh, you can the, get a massage the, the, the from massage, a robot. And then yeah. the, the joke was which jumps to yeah. I wonder if there's gonna be a massage robot porn because there's regular massage porn. They cut a hole in the bottom. I'll tell you later. Uh, I had a masseuse. I probably said this on this podcast. What do they say to you? Give it, give it. She <laughs> put her elbow in me and said, "Give it, I give love it." This. So if they had a robot that would say that, give, give it, it, give it, give it to me, give it, or I will punish you. So mine, yeah, mine goes like she this. She said, "Give it." You like give that it, shit? Give it. You like that shit? I'm in the hole like this going. <laughs> do I like what? You like that shit? I put a fish tank down there and I put a, ski, <laughs> a scuba gear thing so I can watch the fish. <laughs> <while>. <laughs> What an it's an article. It's an it's an article. Article. I can't. Mm. I went to state school. God damn. God damn. All right. Let me make sure there's no Sarah Sherman. Okay. Let's talk about that story. Then is it over? Let's let's talk about the story. We've gone too long. I'm going to tell the story about. Oh, the SNL story. We'll get Sarah to call next week. These are all evergreen, by the way. These Good. are fun. SNL is probably this week though. Fee five fo real. We're gonna end on we this. We could one. have a two show deal. <laughs> <laughs> we do. <laughs> yeah, we have three. two times thirty. <laughs> so this woman says this. Yes. Okay. This is this. Let's get down to the, the nitty gritty. This one was Set it up. SNL has never hired a like hot woman. And I want to be clear, I'm not saying that every single woman who has been a cast member of SNL is ugly. It's just that none of them have ever been like hot. I just kind of have looks that eventually grow on you. This has been on my mind for a while, but I feel like what really settled it in for me was when they hired this girl. I'm sorry, I don't know what her name is. But, um, and then they make every skit that she's in, at least one one skit per episode that she's in, being like, where she plays like someone (laughs) super hot and super dumb. And the point of the joke is that she's super pretty. And it always makes me laugh because like, no offense to her, but she's she's not that pretty she makes she makes money out but if you get defensive it, it's and kind of realize, almost oh, she's, I guess, you know technically giving it a thumbs up well it's hard it's absurd Here, you can female. stop it it's hard for like heidi gardner to come out and say no i'm pretty that's for other people to say we'll say it she's very pretty so is chloe absolutely so is i think sarah sherman's super cute and uh well let me just tell you from my perch in life yeah. where i'm at every woman is pretty Every single woman, because mm-hmm. that's a real strong take. <laughs> that's a real. They are. I most most women when they look back, or we look back a picture of ourselves. Let's just take women for a second. They look back like my wife says, 
I should have just been in a bathing suit the whole time. Yeah, they realize <laughs> why, why every you know, women are very harsh themselves, and we and we point. are harsh on women. Yeah. and then they don't. You're hard through. on me, and I'm hard on you. Excuse me. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Why is everything a sexual innuendo? It wasn't. Now I mean, it is psychologically. <laughs> no, we're we're <laughs> always hard ourselves, and if we if we don't, uh, YouTube comments will pick yeah. up the slack. <laughs> but let me ask you a question, though. So there's the the aesthetic of a potential woman for mm -hmm. David Spoodler. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find my camera. Can't find your camera. Find yeah. your camera. So define hotness because there's there's the aesthetic of someone who would be called a ten or like has like a perfect that perfect. this woman I think is saying physically physically not to mention they're not, super not talented personality not to mention yeah. they're super cute Sarah Sherman has a great voice like all these things add up to what makes someone male or female attractive and so if you're just saying should they all look like a Victoria's Secret model I don't know I mean I just think. It's a weird one. And Sarah Sherman said the best answer. Which was? She said, uh, I'm sorry when I just found out today I'm not hot. I'd like privacy. I'd like to ask for privacy to deal with my family. Oh, God. No, better word. I, if I could I grieve. In... Uglily. Well, Privately and uglily. Let, let damn, me just say that. this now. So she funny. should do one on the men, even though she did say Jimmy Fallon was the definition cool. of a hot man. He's cute, yeah. Yeah. But what the fuck are we over here? Fucking rice -a -roni? No, listen. Jesus Christ, throw us a little bone. What are we? No, it's in the highest ranking I got was a six. So I, I get it. But a lot of comic dudes are, are known for being not that good looking. That's part of the everyman part of comedy. Well, let's just say if Carol Burnett Looked like Raquel Ten. Welch. She looked like Raquel Welch, if you know the reference. Yeah. Carol Burnett looks like Raquel, Raquel Welch, Welch, but she's doing the same sketch show. Google can't even find Raquel Welch. <laughs> I think the best lane for a comedian is to be kind of cute and likable. Yeah. Like every single woman that we're talking about is adorable. Yeah. And um, I can't separate the, the personality. When I see a woman who's funny and super talented, um, the attraction level goes will go so way high, up yeah. Yeah. because smart is, I mean, you probably don't know about this. Let me just set mm -hmm. the table for you. Intelligence is sort of a turn on for people. Mm -hmm. You ever heard that? <laughs> no, cause I'm not smart enough to even no, understand I say that. that. Women would like you cause, cause you're no, I IQ. listen, you're not a dumb, dumb. I listen. I always, you're get, not a dummy. If anyone likes me, it's always starts with, I never like good looking guys. I'm I'm always like guys like you. I'm always like I'm so sick of like the Brad Pitts and the Johnny Depps. I go, all right, you don't need to articulate like that. I get what people you're saying. say to me. I don't. I never like anyone who looks like David Spade, <laughs> and that's my wife, ladies and gentlemen, over here. I tell it like it is. I tell it like it is. They go. I have no idea why, but I think you're so hot. That's yeah. What they, they say well, on Instagram. Oh, it's like a mystery. They go, you're that. actually kind of hot. <laughs> you're actually kind of hot. You don't yeah. need to fucking pad it with that shit. Just say. She goes, my friends, and I can't believe you're my celebrity. So it's crush. like a news flash. Like, I swear to God, I'm not lying right now. Yeah. But I'm actually attracted to you physically. Isn't that and fucking this isn't crazy? A joke. This isn't a joke. This is not an album. I'm not doing a Netflix special about being attracted to David Spade. But I'm telling you. God damn, it's horrible. I can't help it. Thank you for watching. We did a long. We did an hour, didn't we? God damn. What the why do these people get so much for their free money? Fee five fo mode. I smell a second episode. <laughs> this is a two parter. <laughs> as long as I can go fee five whatever and complete it, I'm happy. <laughs> come on, come on the hall. I'm going to show you a two farter. <laughs> oh, oh, we're going to end with Scrooge. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Send us your advice questions. This has been a presentation of Odyssey. Superfly is executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade. Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. Jenna Weiss-Berman of Odyssey. Heather Santoro and Greg Holtzman. Hope you liked it. Mm -hmm.